a conservative force is a force for which the work done in moving an object between two points is independent of the path taken. The three most common conservative forces are the gravitation force between objects with mass, the electrostatic force between charged objects, and the elastic force exerted by a spring or an elastic. There are two terms that are important to understand. To understand a conservative force, and the first is that the work done by a conservative force is independent of the path taken, and we can demonstrate that with an example here where we have a two kilogram object that is taken from being at rest on the surface of the earth and then raised to a height of two meters above the surface of the earth. Now we know that this work needs to be done against the force of gravity. We know that the force of gravity acting on this object is the product of the object's mass and the gravitational acceleration. Therefore, the force of gravity acting on this object is 19.6 newtons. What we can also see here is that in order to raise this object up, a certain amount of work is going to be done by the force of gravity. We know that that is the product of the force, the displacement of the object, and the cosine of the angle between those two. What we can see here is that the force of gravity always acts vertically downward. We have been told that this object has been displaced vertically upward, and therefore we can say that our work done by the force of gravity is 19.6 times 2 meters times the cosine of those being in opposite directions, therefore 180 degrees, and therefore we get a work done as negative 39.2 joules. So we can now say that the work done by the force of gravity here is negative 39.2 joules. And then what's important to note and understand is that we say it's independent of the path taken because the force of gravity always acts vertically downward. So if this object was raised to a height two meters above the ground and also moved horizontally, ultimately, because the force of gravity always acts vertically downward, it is only going to be that component that contributes to the work that is being done. And so we often ask a question in which we are asked to compare moving an object vertically upward or moving it at an angle upward, or even if one were to move it in some strange path, ultimately all that matters is the vertical displacement of that object. And that is why we say that a conservative force is independent of the path taken the second term that's important to understand is that we have said that this is a conservative force. The reason for that is because conservative forces always have an associated potential energy. We know that there is a gravitational potential energy that is the product of an object's mass, Earth's gravitational acceleration and the object's height above the surface of the Earth. So we know that this object initially had a mass of 2 kilograms, Earth's gravitation was 9.8, but the height was zero, and therefore it had zero gravitational potential energy. What then happened is this object was raised to a height of 2 meters above the surface of the Earth, and as a result it gains a certain amount of potential energy, that amount being 39.2 joules. And this is what explains why we call it a conservative force, because as we can see, when there is work done by the force of gravity, despite that being energy that appears to be lost, it is actually converted into another form and able to be used later. So we say it's a conservative force because work done against that force is always converted into another form of energy that can still be used. So there are two important things to remember when considering conservative forces. The first is that the path that is taken does not affect the amount of work that is done because it is the displacement of the object that matters and when you are doing work against gravity all that matters is the vertical height change. And the second thing that's important to remember is that it's conservative meaning that energy is not lost but normally converted into some other form of potential energy.